just generally uh, sketched on two, on two my canvas, but I'm gonna darken it up just a little bit so that I can create a little tracer for my groups, my peoples. So this is what I use for my tracers. It's called a tracing pad. And this one was on clearance because it's upside down. Look at here. So the seal is here, but in the pad, the seal is upside down. <laughs> so it was on clearance and I got it for just a couple of dollars. I'm gonna go ahead and just cut a little piece and we're gonna make ourselves a little trisa. Hey, Renee. All right, so I have my um, popsicle sketched out, but it's sketched right over the top of a uh, pumpkin because this was a pumpkin previously. And let me see if I can just kind of sketch this out so I don't have to worry about it later. All right, we're gonna actually use a real popsicle stick for our stick. And this is those cute little indentions that you're gonna find in a popsicle. And we're gonna see what we can do. So there's our tracer. I can still see that on my piece. So here's what I'm gonna start with first. Since I had already sketched something onto my canvas, I'm gonna come in with a little bit of white and maybe a little bit of a gray or some color mixed in. And I'm gonna literally paint around my already sketched on popsicle just to freshen up that background. Let me see, I actually may do just a tinge, tinsy wincy bit of tropical blue. I'm not sure if you can or not, Becky. It's very thin, but I think you should be able to for sure. I'm gonna put a little tiny bit of that tropical blue and I'm gonna grab a brush and we are gonna get our background painted. I'm just gonna paint right around the popsicle that I already traced onto my canvas. But it's a icky canvas, so. All right, we'll get that brush wet. I'm gonna add my white and I'm just gonna clean up this canvas. I'm gonna hit the sides too because this one looks like it's been around the block a time or two. You know how you have some and you take the paper off or the plastic off and then it just keeps getting tossed around. I think that's what's happened in this one. It's gotten tossed around so much that uh, it's just kind of icky. Now, I do want to remind you guys, we are working on a five by seven and uh, we are going to be giving this little cutie away. So, you know how, do, who does not know how to get their name in the drawing for a piece of art shattered art. Um, basically, all you gotta do, thank you, Vicky. Hey, love bug, how are ya? Basically, all you gotta do is sprinkle the page, share with your friends, let them know we're here, invite them to come hang out and like the page. And we put all those names in a hat and not, not a literal hat. We don't really have a hat here. We put, them, <laughs> we put them in a jar or whatever we have available and we draw a name and that person wins or is gifted the, the, whatever art piece we're working on for that day. So today it will be this cute little popsicle and we're going to use I think we're going to use glass beads thank you guys for the sprinkles I think we're going to use glass beads for our popsicle just so it has a little more a little more room for the actual beads all right so I've, 
I've painted white on my whole background with the exception of where my popsicle is going to be. Okay, just straight white. I'm gonna tip the corner of my dirty brush. It still has all that white on it. I'm gonna tip it into that blue and I am going to just add some of that blue right around one side or the other of my popsicle and then I'll get a teeny bit more, mix a little white in with it and just give the entire white background a little, just a little tinge of blue, just a little shade. There's a little dried up something I'm chasing right there. All right, just a tiny bit of that blue mixed in. I'm gonna come around this side and just kind of outline just that edge. And then we'll swish in a little bit of that blue, just so it's not plain old white. Come here. All right, now, now we have just a faint blue, barely there background around our cute little, hang on, our cute little popsicle. We're gonna straighten that line up just a little too. All right. All right, I'm gonna rinse that off. And I think I've looked at hundreds and hundreds. Yes, Amy, he's here. Say hello, Stephen Gray. Hello. Hello, he said. So I did get a popsicle stick and we'll deal with this later, but I'm literally gonna use that and we'll just cut it to size for our popsicle. But I looked at all kinds of colors and all kinds of different uh, popsicles on the interweb and what I kind of decided on is kind of a mix of red, yellow, and orange. Now I did bring all three colors of those of seed beads, but I think I want to paint my pumpkin, pumpkin. I want to paint my popsicle first. Amy said, hey, hey, mountain man. I think I'm going to paint my popsicle first. And then I may end up just adding the clear crystal seed beads. I kind of want to play it by ear and see what I want. So I did bring all of these to the table just in case. But the colors that we're going to use are, this is cinnamon drop. It's a red, but it's kind of a pinky watermelon red. So we're going to use a little bit of that. Let me get some of that on my tray, my plate. And we'll put a little dot of that out. And then I brought in this pumpkin color. This is never, I'm happy for me too. <laughs> I am happy for me, I'm happy for him. Glad he's home. Starting to get a little pouty. I'm glad he's back. Yes, glad he is back. So this is the orange color we're gonna use and it is called pumpkin. And then we're going to use a yellow and the yellow I grabbed is Anita's Buttercup. But literally guys, any, any shade of these colors, you just want them to be bright and popsicle-y. You don't want them to be dark, muted colors. You want them to really kind of have that popsicle-esque kind of uh, shade to it, all right? So here's what I think I'm gonna do. I am gonna start with my yellow, and I'm gonna do my yellow at the top. So I'm gonna do yellow, orange, red, yellow, orange, red. So I'm gonna start with my yellow, and I'm gonna get a little bit of a smaller brush and I'm not going, I'm gonna kind of blend all three of these colors together because I don't want it to be a stripe of each color. I want them to actually kind of blend together. All right, so I'm gonna start with my yellow and I'm just gonna come up here and add a section of that yellow. 
I'm not gonna come all the way down where it's gonna meet my orange yet. I wanna get the yellow on, and then we'll make adjustments because it's gonna take probably more than one coat. We're gonna get a little base color going, and then we will do some blending. So there's me a little bit of a yellow and I'm gonna grab up some of this orange. I'm gonna come down about almost a half an inch and we're gonna get that orange on. Just leave a little space between your colors for blending. So we'll get that orange on. That almost looks like candy corn so far. <laughs> Right, would that be cool? Yeah, you could do this literally in any colors that you wanted. I saw really, really super cute watermelon um, popsicle that had watermelon seeds in it. It was painted kind of like watermelon and it had watermelon seeds in it. I thought that was super cute, but we just did a watermelon. So I didn't want I dropped a big old drop of pink right there, or red. I didn't want to, you know, repeat myself. So we're gonna go with this. All right, so we got that red color going on. Get all the way to my tracer line. All right. All right, so now I'm gonna rinse all that and we're gonna start doing a little blending. All right, so I'm gonna go back into my yellow. I'm just gonna add kind of a wet line right across the bottom because it is starting to dry there. And I'm gonna get a little bit of that orange and I'm gonna wipe all that color off. And then I'm just gonna kind of blend it just kind of scrub the two colors together. Just get on that line where they kind of meet and just blend together. So that it creates a nice blended line where there's no, there's no hard line between the colors, all right? So now I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna add a little bit more of this red If I can do it right, my hands are a little shaky, McShakerson. I'm gonna come all the way up because I've got a good bit of orange. All right, I'm gonna rinse that off. I'm gonna grab some of the orange. And wipe that off and then I'm just gonna blend. All right, just scrub in, bring your two lines of color together then you can literally like bring one into the other or the other into one, however you wanna do it. I'm gonna go this way. And just kind of meld these together. So you got nice, that looks delicious. That looks very flavorful to me. And I went out of line, so I'm gonna have to jank up. Let me fix that. All right, so just kind of blend whatever colors you're using one into the other. All right, so I'm gonna hit this. Hello, Carol. No AC girl. I've been through the rinker with my AC, my oven, my dishwasher, trees in the backyard. So I'm gonna grab a clean brush real quick. And I'm gonna try to get this dot of red off my canvas. Just with some clean water where I dripped. That's where I just dripped when I was pulling the red off. There we go, that's worked perfectly. So there are my three colors kind of blended together, but we're not gonna stop there. I'm gonna get this dry, and then we're gonna add some details and see how lifelike we can make our popsicle. So let's get it dry.
Ugh, happy, I understand. It is a sunset popsicle. Ooh. I'm gonna make sure it's good and dry. Hey, Lisa. All right, we'll let that cool off for one second. Boom, 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 boom. And I'm gonna use my tracer again. Let me find my carbon paper. And I am going to put, you know how, if you've had a popsicle lately, you know it's got those little indentions where you can break it in half. So we're gonna add those in and add a little detail. And this is kinda why I was trying to decide if I wanted to use be the colored beads or clear. Because I kinda wanna use clear because I'm gonna work on a little detail work here and I kinda want it to show through. Thank you, Linda. So I'm just gonna stick this in and I am going to grab stylus and I'm gonna very lightly create these popsicle indentions. Probably could have freehanded that, but it's a lot of pressure when you're live. <laughs> it's a lot of pressure. Okay, so now let's put our tracer back up here so I don't lose it. Now we're gonna add a little bit of detail to the center. What I wanna do is just kind of darken those areas up a little bit. And I think for that, I'm gonna use, I'm trying to decide. For the yellow, I'm gonna use my orange. For the orange, I'm gonna use my red. And for the red, I'm gonna use red with one tensy, smidgy drop of black in it. Just to create that, boom little bit of shadow that this would create. So I'm gonna take my brush and for the yellow area, I'm just gonna take my brush, it's a little damp, and I'm gonna take the corner, I'm gonna make sure you can see this. I'm gonna take the corner of my brush into that orange and I'm gonna go back and forth on my tray to kind of blend it into my brush. And inside these two little areas, on my yellow portion, I'm gonna bring up that orange into, hang on, I said I was, into the yellow to define that indention. So I'm gonna bring it up and over and back down We'll do it again on the other side, go back and forth. And we're gonna go down, around, and down all on your tracer lines. All right, I'm gonna rinse that off. And in my orange, I'm gonna do the same thing with red. I'm just gonna dip my corner in the red. I'm gonna go back and forth kind of blend that red into my brush so I'm not making like a super hard line. Let me move that over here so you can see it. And I'm gonna take in that orange area, we're gonna add a tiny bit of that red. Hang on, I need more water on my brush. Tiny bit of that red. And bring it all the way down into your red. I'm going to get a little more. And I'm trying to stop if I want to add white in there or not. I'm going to just go ahead and add that red, just a tiny bit. And then down here where the red is, I'm gonna add a little bit more of that red tone right in the middle. Now down in here where the red is, I'm gonna get that red still on my brush. 
And then I'm gonna dip in just a the tiniest, teeniest bit of black, just to make my red super dark. And we're gonna come down our little line and create that shadow. Let's get a little more, a little red, swish back and forth, tiniest dot of black. And we'll do this side. I'm gonna make sure you can see. So just come right up. That was too much, too much, but that's all right. We'll adjust. Around and up. Let me just futz with it a minute. Now, what I'm going to do, clean my brush off and I'm going to grab some whites. It just takes practice. It's really not terrible hard. It just sometimes takes a little bit of practice. All right, so I'm going to get a little white on my brush on the corner, kind of blend it into my brush a little, and across the top of my popsicle, I'm going to just make a little bit of a white highlight. Let's do it again. A little bit of white right on the corner. And then you're going to swish back and forth. I'm going to come between here and add a little bit of that white between those two little indentions. I don't want that harsh line, so I'm gonna blend it out a little. All right, a little more. And I uh, think maybe like just a smidge on this one side. And I'm gonna hit this again. Right down, let me show you that close up and personal. It does kind of look like a sunset. Thank you, Jennifer. It does kind of look like a sunset popsicle, doesn't it? All right, so let me rinse. I don't want to kind of look at it a little bit. I'm gonna just futz, just a smidge. I'm gonna get a little bit of white on my brush and just come in a couple places bring in some of that white not much so it's not one solid color so just a touch of white here and there kind of helps with um giving it more of a 3d effect all right, so I think I kind of want, I feel like my yellow is like all in your face. So I think I'm gonna do a tiny bit of orange on the corner, just swish it out. So there's hardly any on there. And then I'm gonna come and I'm gonna bring some of that orange around one side. Oh, that's much better. It was just kind of too, harsh. So I just brought a little bit of that orange around the top where my white is as well. And I think I'll do the same thing with red. I'm going to get a little bit of red on the corner, swish it off, go back and forth. And into that orange, we're going to add just that little bit of red coming up. All right, so it's super blendy now. <laughs> there we go. I like that better, but I do wanna do one more quick thing. I'm gonna get a tiny bit of the black, just the tiniest. I'm gonna get a smidge of that red too. And I'm gonna come right on this side, on the left side, and just come around bring a little bit of that darkness 
a little bit of that shadow to that side. All right, I'm kind of happy with that now. It's not perfect, but it's good. It's not too terrible. It looks delicious. Makes me want a popsicle right now. So we're gonna let that dry, but while we dry, I'm gonna try to decide how much, how big I want my stick to be. So I'm just gonna lay it down. Then I'm gonna get a little marker, a pen, and I think we're gonna cut it like right here. So I'm gonna make a little mark. And then I am literally going to take a box knife and we'll score it right on that line without cutting ourselves. So I'm just gonna score it. And then I'm gonna break it away from the score. So you wanna bend away. Mm, there we go. Awesome. Now, it's kinda jaggedy, so I'm just gonna press it. Maybe scrape off any excess stuff. You might even be able to use a scissor on that. But I'm not terribly worried about it. I'm just gonna smush it onto my table. Yeah, Bonnie's going to get a popsicle right now. I don't blame you. Kind of want one myself. So, now I'm gonna put a dab of glue on the back side of that, and we are gonna go ahead and pin that down. Put a, just a tiny bit of glue, and we'll get this situated where it should be. Oh, it's so cute. So cute. And then we're gonna take our pen. We're gonna use our lovely pen. Okay, this is our illustration marker and I'm just going to give myself a few details, all right? So I'm just gonna come around. I like short strokes, nothing. I'm not trying to like sketch around the entire popsicle like perfectly. We'll even do a dot, dot, dot. We just want to give it a little highlight. So we'll come around our little indentions. And that literally makes all the difference in the world. Check it out. Look at our popsicle. That is so cute. <laughs> Laura said she wished she had bought popsicles. Is that not adorable? Oh my goodness. Okay, so this is why I think I'm gonna use this instead of, what's that? Instead of these. Because these are opaque, okay? So you could totally, if you didn't want to like do all the detail work or if you struggle, like with blending and detail, you could totally use red, orange, and yellow opaque seed beads and just kind of blend the two colors together. So you put all your red here, blend some red and orange, all your orange, blend some orange and yellow, all your yellow there. But because I have some fairly decent detail, I'm just gonna use these clear ones. This is Crystal Luster, and they look white, but they come off clear. So I think I'm gonna use that, but you do you, and you use whatever works best for you. So, when I use uh, seed beads, I like to use them in the end. So we're gonna make up a little bit of resin, and I got my gloves ready. We're gonna make a little bit of resin up. We're gonna cover this with resin, I'm literally gonna try to make, I need a baby cup. I need a baby. Where are my baby cups? Where are my baby cups? Baby cups. Baby cups. Ouch. That was a sheet of glass. I have these ones, but they are, mm. hang on. These do not wanna come apart. Um, let's see. These are more than I want. Hmm. All right, let me grab a tinsy wincy cup. Off 
I found a baby. That's a one ounce cup. That's what I was looking for. So I'm gonna mark my little cup. Oh my goodness, at one eighth. Oh, yes, yeah, one eighth of an ounce, and then one quarter of an ounce. And that's what we're gonna make. One quarter ounce is probably even too much. We'll see, I'll let you know exactly how much we use. So let's get our gloves on and have a sip of tea from the best place in Hernando, the dip. They have the best tea ever. All right, and we're gonna use art resin just like normal. Let me make sure all that's dry, it looks dry. So I'm going to use art resin. It's a two part resin. This is the hardener. I'm gonna pour myself one eighth of an ounce. It does, doesn't it? Kinda of wanna take a lick of it myself. So I'm gonna be very slow because an eighth of an ounce of resin is nothing. The tiniest, teeniest bit. All right, there. That's the hardener. Now we're gonna do an eighth an ounce of resin. <laughs> Sally, that's funny. So let's do another eighth. The art resin is a 50-50 mix by measurement only, not by weight. Let's see, what I do with the other half of my broken popsicle stick? I was going to use it, but I guess I'm not. All right. So, is Catherine here? Becky? Um, I love Sonic tea, but the dip is closer, so we go to the dip. So, I'm going to stir this for three minutes, very slowly and gently, and get this resin mixed. You don't want to beat it to death. You don't want to whip it. Thank you, Catherine. And uh, we're gonna do that for three minutes. So if anybody has a question about anything, thank you, Catherine. If anybody has any questions, you got three minutes of my undivided attention staring at the screen. So I'd be happy to answer any questions, whether it's about resin, glass, art, anything, any question you have, I'd be happy to answer while I stir slowly, scrape the sides. Summer swing is tomorrow, I believe it is. I wrote that calendar so long ago that um, I can't remember, but I'm sh pretty sure it's the sixth and tomorrow's the sixth, so yes. It will be, it'll probably be in your uh, on your website, in your classroom, on sometime tomorrow afternoon. So yes, Steve did get to the airport, he did find a ride, and I did get him on a flight, and he is sitting in the room right now. <laughs> and my backyard is all fixed up. I, I heard a guy to come out and cut that big branch off of my fence, and he cut it up in pieces and hauled it off and kept some of it too. And he also fixed up my flower beds, so. 
I have done a hummingbird, Kim. There's one somewhere on this page. Um, it's probably been a couple years though. Hey, transfer resin from a gallon jug into a little container very carefully. I don't, you can use a, um, what do you call it? A funnel if that's easier for you, but you just have to do it very carefully because these are what I have on my desk. And when they get empty, I just refill them and you just have to go slow. You cannot do it fastly, that's for sure. We'll see. Stir, stir, stir. Hernando's claim to fame. Gosh, I don't know. What is Hernando's claim to fame? Hmm, I have zero idea what that would be. Their water tower, their festivals, the dip. <laughs> Commerce market. <laughs> Steve said that, he's being a sass mouth. I have done a bird's nest too. I think the bird's nest is in the vaults. Weird question, I'm trying to make a flag on a four by 12. I can only include six stars, even with five stop. It, yeah, just, be, just do as many stars as you can. Um, I've done so many flags and I posted yesterday some flags that I did on a four by 12, Barbara. So go and look at that post. And you just fit as many stars as you can. And um, that's just what you do. I think it's perfectly acceptable. Catherine said time. <laughs> okay, so campfire roasting marshmallows. That sounds like a good idea. Okay, so we are done. I'm gonna scrape my sides one more time just for fun. And Oh, the bird's nest in Steve's truck is still there. He has not driven his truck, and I've informed him that he is unable to drive his truck until the birds are gone. So he is in my care today. He is at my mercy. Drove with me into work this morning and been stuck here all day but he has helped get all of our kits ready for the post office to pick up. So he might complain, but I'm not because he has worked his little honey off today. So I'm just gonna spread this resin around onto my canvas. And I got a little bit more Gonna go ahead and get it all out. So that was the perfect amount. It was a quarter ounce total. Just move it around. I'm trying to use my stick instead of my fingers. And I do have a little bit of uh, orange, like right there on the side, that kind of got loose, but that's okay. We're gonna call that a popsicle drip. It's not perfect, it's just a little drippy. <laughs> That's what we're gonna say anyway. That's our story and we're sticking to it. All right, so I'm gonna turn it back this way. Put that on my plates. I'm gonna go around with my fingers and hit the edges. And I do see a little bit of debris. So I'm gonna grab my little pokey pin and just grab that up. I don't want that in there. For that, just room debris. Not much you can do about that for the most part. Just pick out what you see and the rest becomes part of the art. That's right. Pretty much almost impossible to get a perfectly clean room. All right, let me hit this with our heat gun. And then we're gonna add some pizzazz. So we'll pop these bubbles real quick. That's the perfect amount of resin, not too little, not too much. And since I was able to keep my gloves clean, I will be able to 
sprinkle on some of these seed beads without them sticking to my fingers. So let me see if I can get this open. Apparently this is a brand new container. So let me see if I can get this open without spilling them or cutting my finger. That would be a miracle. Oh, there we go. Hey, Brandy. Emmy said they put plastic wrap over their grills to keep the birds out. Oh my goodness, that's a great idea. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit to my little cup. Just find it easier. That way if I have a boo-boo and they go crazy, um, I won't be dumping the whole thing off. So I try to stay four or five inches away from my art piece with my heat gun and you want to keep it moving, okay? You don't want to hone in on one spot and be still. You want to keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. All right, I think I'm gonna start on one side and I'm just gonna tap in some of these seed beads and I may only do one side. Let's do some right here. I wanna play it by ear. Maybe a few up the middle right there. And then a few on this side right here. Of course, there's no wrong way, guys. There's no right or wrong. Do what you feel is appropriate and what you like. All right, I'm gonna grab my little tool again and micromanage where my beads are. Smoosh them down into that resin a little bit. Now it looks like a frosty popsicle. All right, let me shove them around a little bit. Can't make sure they're on the area I want them. Oh my goodness, y'all. This is so stinking cute. All right, and it's never a straight line. I'm gonna show you this really close up, but it's seriously never a straight line of beads. I like it to be organic and never perfect. Oh my goodness, look at this. Look at this, I'm, I'm looking at it real quick too, so. Look how cute. How adorable is that? Oh my goodness. Oh, uh, Debbie, if you don't have a heat tool, this tool is the only, you could find one on Amazon for less than $20. You can use a hairdryer. You just have to be a little more careful because a hairdryer blows air. This more pushes heat out and so if you use a blow dryer, you wanna be a little further away, maybe eight to 10 inches. You want it on low air, so it's barely blowing and high heat, because it's the heat that hits those bubbles and pops them and not um, the air itself, okay? Yeah, this is actually a bead tool that Miss Lulu gave me. Um, so it, um, it's pointy, almost like a needle, but it's a beading tool. So you can get that at any craft store. I mean, it's really great for wiggling things around. Is that not cute? I love it. All right, I'm gonna turn 